In Lecture Outline 3, we're going to talk a lot about solutions. And when you think solution, you should think the aqueous phase, uh, which is a fourth phase of matter for things dissolved in water. That's the fourth phase in addition to solids, liquids, and gases, which we've already talked about. Some solution terminology. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more materials, where the word homogeneous means that it is consistent throughout, that uh, you cannot tell one portion of a solution uh, any being any different than any of the others. A simple example of a solution, a homogeneous mixture, is salt dissolved in water to produce a solution. In that case of salt water, the solute will be the sodium chloride, the salt. That will be the component of a solution present in a smaller amount. And there can be many solutes, so you can dissolve sugar and salt in the same water, sugar and salt will each be a solute, while water will be the solvent, the component of a solution present in the greatest amount. And in this class, water is always the solvent. There are very few exceptions, and I will point them out if it happens. So, uh, and that's why we have the aqueous phase. Aqueous phase is a solution, uh, anything that is in an aqueous phase has water as the solvent. Now, we will talk about dilute solutions and more concentrated solutions, and the only difference between them is the amount of solute dissolved. Um, so a more concentrated solution will have more solute dissolved and have, therefore, the solute particles closer to each other, although still, on average, spaced relatively far apart. And a dilute solution will have less or a lower concentration. Definition of concentration uh, that we will use is a quantitative measure of the amount of solute in a given amount of solvent. The unit of concentration that we use by far the most is molarity. It is represented by capital M, and it is moles of solute per one liter of solution. If we wanted to make a one molarity solution, also called a 1.00 molar solution, we love molarity so much we give it a cute nickname. A 1.00 molar solution of sodium chloride. First off, we would take and measure out 58.44 grams of sodium chloride on a scale. Measuring solids is easier with uh, a scale and mass. That is equal to 1.00 moles. We would pour it into a volumetric flask, and this is the shape of a volumetric flask. We would use a funnel to make sure we don't mi miss. We would add some water until the solid is dissolved. Swirl, if you will, and we will get to do this in the lab. And then fill it up to the meniscus, so the meniscus sits right on the uh, mark that uh, tells us exactly what the volume is. And in this case, it's a one liter volumetric flask. We have one mole in that one liter. Now, questions you're gonna see on homework are more like this. Find the molarity of a solution that has 25.5 grams of potassium bromide dissolved in 1.75 liters of solution. Uh, calculations for this. Again, lots of ways to do them. One way is to think about the definition of molarity, which means blank molarity or molar potassium bromide equals blank moles of potassium bromide per blank liters. And uh, this is a definition of molarity. We have the grams of potassium bromide. And not the moles, but we do know how to convert molarity into moles, the molar mass of potassium bromide, 119.00. We can do this math. We get 0 0.214 moles of potassium bromide. We have the liters, 1.75. However you do this, whether you call this your x and then solve for x, or simply write it on the line, 
uh, I am going to go to 0 0.214 divided by 1.75. I get 0 0.122 molar potassium bromide. Good concentration units include not only the molarity, but what is the solute as well. So please include those. This example, the only difference, and this will therefore become a companion problem, the only difference is that instead of liters, we have been given milliliters. We know that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, or a power factor of 10 to the third, either way. We know that liters are a bigger unit than a milliliter, and therefore, I will move my decimal point three places to the left to get the liters of solution that I would, could then plug in to do uh, number three. You can also write out the conversion factor explicitly. Be careful, you don't want to move the decimal point in the wrong way, of course. Variations on a theme, you'll find lots of them. How many liters of 0 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide contain 4.56 grams of sodium hydroxide? Again, I'm gonna set this up. Molarity, sodium hydroxide is equal to moles per liter of solution. Uh, I know the molarity here. I don't know the moles, but I do know the grams. And we will do so many gram to mole, mole to gram conversions. Turns out the molar mass, 40.00 grams per mole. Multiply this out, or in this case, divide. 0 0.114. In this case, I will fill in with an X here, and I will solve uh, however I do it using cross multiplying. I know that uh, one, 0 0.114 equals. 0 0.125 times x. Divide through both sides by 0 0.125. And I get that x equals uh, 0.114 divided by 0 0.125. 0 0.912 liters of solution is my answer to this problem, number four. I can also write 0 0.912 liters of sodium hydroxide solution to be even more specific. Either answer is okay. Here is another companion problem. Look for the answers to the companion problem on in the course uh, learning management system.